Hey, what's up, film future? Welcome back to the Dark Movies YouTube channel. My name is Tobias, but you can call me Toby. And today, we are reviewing the remake of Salem Slot, directed by Gary du Doperman, or Duperman. I have no idea how to pronounce his name. And he has actually directed just one movie before this, and that was Annabelle Comes Home from 2019. He has also been a writer for many other projects, the two It films, all the Annabelle films, and so many more. He's a pretty decent guy for horror. And don't you worry about my arm, I just used your mom a bit too much, and uh, well, it's hurting, so. Do me a favor, please. Get out of here. Get out of here, man, Sh I'm saying. But this remake of Salem's Lot follows author Ben Mears returning to his childhood home only to discover his hometown is being preyed upon by bloodthirsty vampires. So having no experience with the original 1979 original film or reading any of the Stephen King book, I was excited for this one. I was optimistic and I thought the trailers did look interesting. Enough for me to actually watch, but it's definitely something that would not do well on the big screen, in my opinion. And as someone who is kinda new to vampire films and lore, I guess, I do know something and I've seen some movies. I mean, I have Abigail back there. This was actually kind of refreshing to see these bloodthirsting monster blockbusters again. It feels really like a classic old style horror film that you would maybe watch on like the 21st of October, Halloween, you know, put, put on a vampire film to enjoy yourself for two hours. I do enjoy some of the cinematography. The lighting in this one too is phenomenal. I think it's really unique. For example, I've never seen a cross light up, but if you turn it to a vampire, that was actually kind of cool to see. <laughs> And I think it had some pretty decent kills in it. I will talk more about the kills and how I felt in detail about that later without spoiling. It was somewhere pretty decent. I wouldn't say amazing. I also do enjoy the direction it took. Even though it could have been better, I respect the decision. That being said though, the film suffers from a lackluster script. It's hard to ignore how flat the character felt. For a story set in a town filled of vampires, the urgency and the terror just didn't come through. I felt like the characters didn't realize at all that like, well, wait, you're, we are dealing with vampires? Like, they were just so casual with it is that the pacing it is almost around two hours mark salem slot should have had more time to breathe all of the scenes felt really rushed that it almost was like a 20 minute montage it's unfortunate because this story it has potential without fleshing out the characters or letting key moments land it ends up feeling shallow and now for some of the kills i wish there was more on-screen kills though for an R-rated film, yes, you heard me right, Salem Slot is R-rated, it's really tame. There were some pretty cool kills at, during the end, like, third act. The rest of it didn't really work for me. A lot of it was off-screen, which was really sad. I enjoy some cool kills in my slasher horror trope film. Take Terrifier, for example. If Terrifier didn't have any cool kills, I wouldn't want to watch it. I know it sounds psychotic, I know that, but be honest with me, if you like Terrifier or Terrify 2, if it didn't have those cool kills and a lot of it was off screen, do you think you would still enjoy it? Let me know down in the comments if you would still enjoy Terrifier if it has zero on screen kills. In the end though, it's a decent watch. I can see why it went into just this straight up streaming movie. It's not a disaster by any means. And for horror fans or King Stephen King enthusiasts, I think it's definitely worth checking out. Don't go expecting any deep dive character driven horror experience, okay? So I will give visuals and cinematography 9 out of 10. I do love the at least cinematography on it, how much work it took to get this made is insane and I love it. I'll show you my favorite set design and lighting because this one right here on the screen right now, 
I love that. I I think that was really cool mixing blue and pink with that background. I think that was a great choice. And now for acting and dialogue, a 6 out of 10. While I enjoyed the performances, the characters weren't really fleshed out and the dialogue felt a little bit too cheesy for a movie like this. And now for the storytelling, also in 6 out of 10. I do really v wish some more character driven story. Please let it flesh out and please let the movie have time to breathe. It's like non stop, just action, 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 action. It's fine for an action movie like John Wick. Even in John Wick, there's drama. There's actually drama. In this one, yes, there's a little bit drama, but it's just so much that it just becomes rushed. Now for my personal enjoyment of the film, I'm gonna say it's a 6 out of 10. I do enjoy seeing some classical vampire trope. And now for my Dark O score, or other will say my personal ranking of the film, I'm gonna say a 3 out of 5 stars. And now for critical, or I'd say my critic side of mine, I will go for a C. But that's just my review of the remake of Salem Slot. Did you have the chance to watch it? What do you think of it? I found it on Max. It came out yesterday. So what do you think of it? And hope you guys enjoy. Like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in another video. Peace.